Welcome to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. This show is created with the intention of helping others to help and love themselves. Aside from weekly skin tips, you will hear me feature amazing souls from around the world who are making a difference by helping others in their own way. You may also hear me follow up with a guest I have hypnotized in an online edition of Love from the Hip, which is available on YouTube. Together, we can all make a difference, and it starts with love, love from the hip. How does smell work? Upon even detecting a smell, the olfactory neurons in the upper part of the nose send an impulse to the brain, which first arrives at the olfactory bulb. This olfactory bulb processes the signal and then passes along the information about the smell to other areas closely connected to it, which is known as the limbic system. The limbic system is comprised of the hippocampus and the amygdala. Research has proven that smells trigger greater activity in the limbic system than images and even words. Sense of smell has been more closely linked to memories than any other sense. Smells have also been said to be highly emotive. Memories that have been evoked by odors also create more brain activity in areas associated with visual vividness. A number of behavioral studies have shown that smells trigger emotional memories and are better at inducing the feeling of being back in time than images themselves. Even the lack of a sense of smell can result in the loss of an important sentimental pathway to memories. Loss of smell, as in the case of anosmia sufferers, lends to depression because one feels disconnected from others. Not to mention the loss of olfactory function is also said to be an early indicator of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. If you think about it, odors and the olfactory system play a vital role in the survival of animals. Most olfactory learning occurs during an animal's major life events. In humans, there are two types of ethological olfactory learning. The first occurs postpartum when the mother learns the odor of the newborn, and this is critical for the mother to accept, nurse, and bond with the baby. The second is when odor learning involves mate recognition. Think of how powerful smells are in attracting your partner. Our body odor produced by our genes, which make up our immune system, actually help us to subconsciously choose our partners. Kissing, surprisingly developed from sniffing. Fear conditioning is also developed through odor in which a temporal association of a neutral stimulus or an odor is made with a noxious stimulus only after a few pairings. So given that odors enhance the retrieval of autobiographical memories, induce physiological arousal, and trigger trauma-related flashbacks, it is reasonable to say that odors play a significant role in the pathophysiological of post-traumatic stress disorder. In fact, individuals suffering from PTSD are mo- more prone to smell triggers. And for some, PTSD is a result of the memories that are finally remembered. According to Dr. Carrie Ressler, chief of the Division of Depression and Anxiety Disorders at McLean Hospital in Belmont, Massachusetts, the olfactory system is the only system where we have the specific genetic tools that allow us to dissect how different odors in the environment activate different neural pathways. No other sensory system has this level of specificity. Ressler goes on to say that trauma is actually encoded in the brain by the increasing trauma cues in the environment. The good news is that just as the trauma changed the brain to exist, so too can it be reversed with treatment. This involves changing that fearful cue in the environment to no longer be fearful at all. Research has also discovered that memories evoked by smells are said to be located in the first decade of life, from infancy to 10 years of age, whereas memories associated with verbal or visual cues are said to be in early adulthood, at 11 to 20 years of age. This has a lot to do with the fact that odor learning begins very early in life. It has been proven that most people will forget traumatic incidents, like in the several studies of men that served in the Vietnam War. So when a smell or other trigger can bring back a memory that has been forgotten, this is called a recovered memory. Science has shown that even without memories of an event, people can still have post-traumatic reactions. People who have suffered abuse, for instance, may have body memories, which means they feel as though they are back being abused again, feeling it all so vividly. These trauma-related reactions like sweating, trembling, heart racing, and other physical and emotional responses are known as implicit memories and require no conscious memory of the event to be experienced. Implicit memories are much more reliable than declarative memories, which are just the story or the details of the event. 
Implicit memories tells us that our memories of smell, taste, body sensations, emotions, and sounds, none of which require thought or conscious recall, are the most accurate memories. This means that you can trust your intuition, your feelings, your body memories, and your visual memories to tell you the truth. And it is worth exploring, especially if a smell and a surprisingly good one makes you feel bad for no apparent reason at all. After all, you don't need to be living in the fight or flight mode if the fight is over. In the words of author Michelle Rosenthal, survival mode is supposed to be a phase that helps save your life. It is not meant to be how you live your life. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lisa Solterbeck. She is an intuitive empath and clinical social worker. Lisa will share how a smell triggered recovered memories for her and why she stuffed those memories so deep. Also, later on the show, we will open up the phone line. So if you are having a block in your life, and want to know what it could be, then you'll want to call in. So stick around after this quick break. Your skin is your body's largest organ. Care for it properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers several clinical facial treatments to help stimulate collagen production, eliminate toxins, boost circulation, and deeply cleanse. See a new you in your mirror. Clinical facials range from $90 and up. Do your face a favor. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles, one clinical facial at a time. Learn more, sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K. URA skinandmind.com. Multicultural, multi dimensional, even. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and to subscribe and share my YouTube channel and podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Lisa Solterbeck. She is an intuitive empath and clinical social worker. And she is joining us today via Skype in Salem, Oregon. Hey, Lisa, thanks for being there today. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, did you have a smell that triggered a memory that you could not remember? I did. And I loved your opening. I think you really are on the mark with what you're talking about. I, uh, in the beginning, had a had an experience where um, I was had gone through a conflict with my stepson. And I just kept getting this feeling of not being valued. And um, I, I had addressed it and we had struggled with that relationship. And I was by myself with my partner in our bedroom one day and I had my hand on my heart and I was like, I've got to make a change. And I just started to ache and a memory started to pop up and I started to smell at first um, syrup. And I was like, what is this? Hmm. <laughs> so it's extreme smell coming up. And then I also started to smell men's cologne with it. Okay. And so you didn't know right away what that memory was, or did it start to slowly divulge? I had no idea what the memory was. Um, I just knew that I, at that point, I had addressed an issue kind of directly with my stepson, and I had to make a big decision to make a change. And I I made a decision I didn't want to have to make, but I made a decision at that point. And so when I was laying there, I was really stuck with the feelings of like, this is just an awful feeling in me that I have to feel. Mm -hmm. And it felt, I I literally said to my partner, I go, something bad's coming in. And I could feel it. And my body shook and had just a really visceral response from it. Wow. And and you weren't even around the smell. It was just coming back. No, no. Huh. Um, it, 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 it came to me the same way as like it does an intuitive hit. I would almost see it and then I could start to literally smell it in the room. Okay. And how old were you when this happened? How long ago was this? About my 30s, okay. early 30s. Mm-hmm. So what did you do from that point after feeling all those physical sensations? What did you decide to do? Well, it was, you know, I've done a lot of training in this kind of area around learning to be with your body. And I, I knew that I needed to actually literally feel it Mm -hmm. rather than run from it. You know, before I might've fixed things or done anything I could to not deal with that feeling, but I made a decision to really feel it. And I asked my partner to hold my heart and help me go into what I was sensing was coming up. Mm -hmm. I was very scared. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) It held me still so I could get the courage to go inward. Okay. And so what kinds of modalities or what kind of people did you seek out in order to recover these memories? You know, I had done a lot of work. I had done hypnotherapy, which I loved to get to the subconscious, um, NLP, neuro-linguistic patterning, 
Um, I'd, I'd seen a lot of spiritual workers, shamans. Um, and then, you know, because of my background, I had a quite a bit of training in it. And so I was able to kind of use the knowledge that I had as well as the spiritual teachings of people that would teach me to go inward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've seen it work. So yeah, you can attest to that. So can I ask you then what were the memories? So I had old sex abuse come up of a father and a son, and they had tied me up and sexually abused me because I had uh, spilled the milk (laughs) at the house and the mom was OCD and she would get very mad. And so she asked them to come in and give me a consequence for spilling it. And she left the house and that's what they did was they sexually molested me. Okay. And how old were you? Five or six. Wow. Right in there. Yeah. And then, so after that memory came up, was there more? You know, it came up little bits at a time. Um, The first time when it actually came up, when I was having those sensory smells, um, it, it, my body literally kind of went into the fetal position. I was gagging like I had something in my throat, which is kind of interesting because I wasn't able to throw up until that point in my life. Hmm. Um, so I had like a fear of vomiting and things like that. But I think it was that I was holding my pain in. And so everything that I had been not feeling came in all at once. Yeah. You know, so it was pretty heavy. Um, I remember my partner saying, oh, my God, you look like you're five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just this little girl came up. Right. Um, and so but I have to ask then up until that point. Uh You had no recollection or no awareness that you had been sexually abused. No, I had people ask me, you know, Lisa, are you sure you've not been sexually abused? I go, no, I have no memory. Mm -hmm. I had a really loving family. And so I just, I compartmentalized it. I had no clue. My friends later said they could tell, but I, I didn't know. Right. Okay. So then you just dove into all of these healing modalities. So what exactly did you start with? You, did you start with hypnosis? Um, you know, that, I guess that's where the, the tricky part is here. I had been doing it all the way up to that point. Okay. So okay. all those modalities, I was like kind of almost like going in my backyard and picking up the easy pieces of paper through hypnotherapy, neurolinguistic patterning, shaman work, and doing destiny retrievals or soul retrievals. Or, you know, I would do all that kind of work. Mm-hmm. And then it seemed like at that pentacle point, um, I had cleaned out all the easy stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the big stuff started to come up. Yeah. And I had the skill sets to be able to take myself into it. Mm-hmm. So I did it myself. Okay. With my partner there. And then I would work later on with other therapists or different things to kind of keep walking me through it. All right. So then I have to ask too, because of your background in psychology and social work at that time, mm-hmm. did you feel ashamed at all? You know, you'd think I would, but I felt so relieved (laughs) that it was like, I I didn't care at that point. It was, I just wanted to get it out. And I I really have a true desire to help people with a pure heart. Yeah. I actually felt, you know, like a fraud in some ways because I was helping them and then I I had something obviously in me that I didn't know how to resolve. It would show up in my life behaviorally, like kind of a feeling like I wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Um, So self-esteem issues. And um, that bothered me because I, I wanted to help people heal, but I, I felt like something in me was broken. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you had said, too, that you hadn't thrown up until that point, until everything was surfacing. You right. Had, you had always had, like, maybe gagging, but you, you've never thrown up. So I there- literally had a seizure one time from holding that, and I just, I couldn't release. Wow. So my body released physically. Okay. So then did you have physical issues or ailments prior to that coming up? Um, any physical you know, cues? Have, I'm sorry, what was that? Any physical cues? You know, probably, yeah. I mean, I, I, now that I look back, there was a lot of different things going on in my body. You know, I would, I would have anxiety. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely that there was an incongruency going on inside. Um, I would have aches and pains a lot. I, I had really bad headaches, neck pain, shoulders would just burn. Um, I'd get that in my wing bones, like there was a fiery element inside. Yeah. Okay. So definitely quite some yeah. some issues. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to have to take a quick break. But remember, everybody, this is a live show. And if you think you're experiencing a block in your life but aren't sure what it is and want to find out, then feel free to call one 298 kknw or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. 
Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life, triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD, following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's Battlefield the number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. Microneedling is a revolutionary treatment that can help reduce the appearance of acne scars, fine lines, pigmentation, wrinkles, even improve the appearance of stretch marks by stimulating collagen and elastin. Sakura Skin and Mind specializes in this procedure that jumpstarts your body's natural healing process. Sakura Skin and Mind believes in not only keeping the skin up to date with the latest trends in the skincare industry, but also keeping the skin beautiful, fast, pretty, painless, and affordable. Find out more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A skinandmind.com. At Madsen Medical Spa, our goal is a healthy, beautiful you. We're a full-service medical spa, but our focus is educating people on maintaining health and wellness. We're excited to announce a new addition to our menu, Nootropic Popular Beverage. This magical drink formulation alleviates unnecessary snacking while keeping you focused and alert throughout your day. It satisfies your hunger, renews your energy, enhances your mood, diminishes aches and pains. Essentially, it makes you happy. And who doesn't want to be happy? Patients have already been raving about Nootropic Popular Beverage. They've elevated their mood while losing inches in the process. It's safe, natural, fast, and effective. Drink happy, feel happy. Nootropic Popular Beverage, happiness in a cup. Available at happytoelevate.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-T-O-E-L-E-V-A-T-E.com. Or call 206-234-9188. Warning, you may feel happy. Hypnotherapy helps you discover and explore deep, sustainable life changes. Let Sakura guide your communication with your unconscious mind. Rid yourself of negative behaviors, fears, pains, and emotions. Weight loss, smoking, childhood drama, chronic pain, and much more can be addressed. Begin healing now. Just $100 for the first session. Learn more. Sakura Skin and Mind.com. S A K U R A Skin and Mind. Dot com. Bring out the healthy way of thinking you didn't know you had. Need help getting started with self-help? You came to the right place. Alternative Talk, 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to tune in right here on KKNW every Wednesday at 2 to 3 p.m. for more Love from the Hip. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lisa Solterbeck. She is an intuitive empath and clinical social worker. And she is joining us via Skype in Salem, Oregon. And remember, if you want to find out what your block is that you're experiencing in life, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So Lisa, before the break, you were sharing with us your recovered memories. So how many times did you find out that you were actually sexually abused? I have three memories of incidences happening. Um, I can't say that I have the full picture except for the first one. The first two, or the second two, excuse me, that the first one was the father and the son. Another one was a family friend. And then another one was a youth pastor at my parents' church. Wow. And so what was the age range that you had been sexually abused? You know, I the only thing I know is really around five or six. And so I would guess around up till, I guess it would have been probably 10 or 11 is probably the, the age that I can see myself in on those experiences. Okay. Yeah. That's a long later time. with the youth pastor. It was early years with the, the first one mm-hmm. and then early with the other one as well. Okay. And your family was not aware. 
No, I have, I have like the best family in the world, but uh, very religious um, in the Baptist church. And it was, uh, it was the people that harmed me were two were deacons and one was a youth pastor. So they were people that, that they trusted with all their heart. And so they actually, I think behaviorally when I would be troubled or have a hard time, they thought that it was my issue, not, yeah. not be on the outside. Right. That you were just acting out. So the only thing, oh, I'm sorry. The only thing my parents did notice when I came home from being at that family friends with the father and the son, um, my parents said that my sister and I came home and we were holding hands and we wouldn't talk and they didn't know why. And they, then that family group pulled away from us after that, wow. but we refused to talk. Okay. So when you recovered these memories, did you also relay this information to your family? Yes. And, and how did they deal with that? Um, I think they were mortified. Yeah. Um, sister was very supportive and she's always wondered if she had something to, um, you know, she was there in that incident, but she doesn't have the memory of it. She, she feels it in her body, but she's not been able to recover that. Mm-hmm. And my parents were just felt terrible. My dad teared up and just said, I, I would have stopped it if I could understand. And he kind of beat himself up about not being able to yeah, fix it. Right. I imagine. So did this also affect your relationship with religion then? Yes. Um, well, there's a lot of factors with me. One, I'm gay, so that didn't fly real well. Right. And then <laughs> um, I'm, I'm also, you know, do psychic work, and that isn't really received in that belief system very well. Right. Um, so there was, you know, all those pieces of the puzzle. So I felt that I really needed to find my own way because the church maybe couldn't walk with me in certain parts of my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so as you were recovering more and more of these memories, I would imagine you're feeling more emotional and physical responses. How did that affect your relationship then with your partner? (laughs) Yeah, I've been with my sweetheart for almost 19 years now. But um, (laughs) really what it did was it made me believe in some ways when we would get troubled or my issues would get triggered that I would think she was my enemy. Mm. And I would probably project my trauma that she was a baddie. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, as I couldn't accept that there was something about it that had hurt me and I didn't know how to deal with it. So I would project. OK, you know, and, I think I would try to stop her from bringing up the emotion right. instead of deal with the emotion. OK. And that was that the same too with your children? No. OK. <laughs> so my kids did it. My, my stepson triggered me. So it was the different family dynamic that threatens my core wound. Yeah. It was, you know, it's it was the just that different perspective that triggered and elicited what was trapped inside me. Huh. OK. And so then how many years did you dive in to do the healing work? You know, I think really from the point I had done a lot of prep work. So I'd say maybe three years before and then I dove into it. So I'd say like seven years total mm-hmm. okay. that it really was like cleansing and mm-hmm. getting it out. Um, it just doesn't show up in the, my life now anymore. I mean, it really, I literally work through that so that it, I mean, I can talk about it openly. I don't, nothing, I put it on other radio shows or write about it. I don't, yeah. I don't define myself by it anymore. Okay. And so yeah. what happened to you then afterwards, which really tested you and your healing? Um, I think just in general, I really felt that I needed to humble out and surrender. And so I had some life challenges that kept bringing this feeling of helplessness up. The economic nightmare of 2007 and eight got me, you know, and so I was profoundly affected and it just seemed like, I don't know, I remember saying we did a vision board class once and I set the intention that year that um, any part of me that was out of integrity collapse Mm -hmm. and that I could release that and move into integrity because that's really what my heart's desire was right boy did it I mean like financially (laughs) everything you know know, just anything that I had created an illusion in my mind of how to protect myself was removed Mm -hmm. so it was tough but now I look back and I think oh my god I'm so much freer now right okay and did it change your perspective too then with the abusers 
Did you look at the situation differently at all? Yeah, interesting enough, how it changed is not how I would have thought. I always wanted to love everybody. I'm a Libra. <laughs> you know, I'm all about loving everybody and, and those kind of things. And I still really believe in that philosophy that, you know, at the core, we need to stay connected to love because that's where we're connected to our source. Right. But I think what's changed is my abusers are neutral to me now. Hmm. Okay. So instead of me desperately wanting to try to overcome my trauma to love them or make everybody feel loved and safe, I realized that that's not my job. Mm -hmm. I stopped being a people pleaser. I stopped trying to um, affirm everybody and I started to be true to myself. Okay. And did you ever come face to face again with any of your abusers? You know, I have the youth pastries cross my path and I've asked spirit for me to have the grace to address it when it's the right time, but it has not felt like the right time. Um, the, my first memory came back a week after the actual person died. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know if that was part of his contract or what, right. the memory came back a week after he passed. And then I had a kind of an interesting incident with the son of the father son abuser that I can talk about too, that. Yeah. That kind of how it showed itself. And so what happened with that? So a lot later, you know, beyond when this all first came up and those kind of things, um, I kept really asking spirit to bring forward my any infection that I might have left from the abuse and trauma. And I would put aromatherapy on my chest every day when I was working with clients or whatever. And I'd say, spirit, if there's something I'm supposed to express, or get out of me, or something that's supposed to show itself to me, bring it forward, remove all my infection. And, oh boy, so <laughs> some time passed, and I, I probably did that for months, just really working on bringing that feeling up. And suddenly I started to kind of get like visions of kind of weird things and little thoughts crossing my mind, stuff that would cross my path, and I was like, huh, something's trying to show itself to me, like signs and omens. And um, I had this kind of odd thing happened with smells, which is so interesting. You're speaking on that yeah. is we were at the house one day and I had just been working on stuff and lots of signs and omens the week before were showing up. And I was just sitting in my living room and this odd smell of Dracar, the cologne started to come up and it, I mean, it was strong and I was like, it's coming out of my chest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And my partner comes in the room and I go, what do you smell? And she goes, Dracar. Wow. I went, and then we had a roommate there and I says, what do you smell? She comes up the steps. She goes, oh my God, it smells like men's cologne, Dracar. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? Well, the next day I go to work and, um, I had just a full day. I usually see eight, nine clients a day and I get to a session and a gentleman comes in and he looks identical to the child, you know, at the time he was a teenager at the time who had abused me. Hmm. And he was just deeply troubled. And I listened to his whole session and just honored it. And the very last five minutes, I just heard in my head, Lisa, there's a message. And I just said to him, I said, so is there anything else you'd like to tell me before we close this session that's important for you to express? And he paused and he suddenly broke down <laughs> and expresses that he walked in on a girl being raped and how horrible it was and how it's ruined him. And he just expressed this whole thing. So I did a session with him and helped him, you know, do the healing work around that. But mm -hmm. I can't remember if I mentioned it to you, but he smelled like your car. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, Oh my God. And I, I, as he leaves, I just said, okay, spirit, I'm listening. So I was paying attention to the signs and omens. And I had looked before for this person. I'll, I'll just give a first name, but it was, his name was Jeff. And I went on Facebook and I said, spirit, if I'm supposed to find him this time, make it be there. I'm going to let this go and not read into this. Right. And it pops up. Huh. And I was like, oh, God. So I just printed it because I needed to go on to another session. And I gave it to my personal assistant, my daughter-in-law. And I says, honey, can you look this up? And just, you know, over time, just see if there's any information here that I need to know. She comes back um, about a week later. And she goes, Mom, I found something. And I says, okay. And we sat down. She goes, you sure you want to know? I go, yeah. And he was arrested that week oh for sex gosh. abuse. And oh. he was in Bend, and I was like, Bend, Oregon. And I was like, oh, my God. She goes, Mom, there's one more thing. And I says, well, what's that? And she goes, uh, "He look at the address. And I go, okay. And the address was across the street from her house. Wow. And it where my granddaughter was living. Uh -huh. So it's like I just felt so honored that spirit can show us what messages we need and how to protect ourselves. Right. If willing to allow ourselves to see what hurt us. Wow. 
that's an incredible situation and story. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm going to interrupt you again. We're going to have to take a quick break. But remember, this is a live show. And if you think you're experiencing a block in your life or you have a question about trauma, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. On this weekly skinny, I would like to talk about seasonal allergies and your skin. Not only is the pollen in the air bothersome to your throat and irritating to your eyes, but it also affects your skin. Not to mention the constant blowing and wiping of your nose that causes the skin around your nose to become red and irritated. And you run the risk of developing the allergic crease, which is the pigmented line that forms across your nose from wiping it so much. Seasonal allergies cause overall dryness, flakiness, and increased redness all over the skin due to your body trying to ward off the irritants. Pollen is considered to be a protein, and if your skin barrier is already compromised, as in the case of eczema, when the protein lands on your skin, it can trigger a rash resulting in redness, itching, and swelling. Because seasonal allergies also cause red, puffy, and itchy eyes, the constant rubbing can contribute to eye wrinkles. In fact, it can lead to an accentuation of the skin fold around the eyes due to swelling and is known as a Denny Morgan fold. Some dermatologists actually recommend wearing oversized sunglasses to prevent the pollen proteins from landing on the eye area. Aside from antihistamines and avoiding touching one's face, doctors of course will recommend topical steroids to treat atopic dermatitis or allergic-induced eczema. Of course, products containing topical antioxidants and vitamins as well as colloidal oatmeal can also aid in soothing allergic rashes. The Renewal Calming Cream from Epionce contains 0.03% colloidal oatmeal and ceramides, which helps not only temporarily protect the skin barrier from irritation, but also is clinically proven to relieve the symptoms of rashes and eczema. It is also a great moisturizer for those whose skin is resistant to sensitizers and preservatives found in standard moisturizers. If you are struggling with eczema and or seasonal allergy skin irritations, you can find Epion's Renewal Calming Cream available at sakuraskinandmind.com. Did you know that your skin is your body's first defense against disease and infection? BrioTech knows and has developed their topical skin spray to enhance your skin's natural healing responses and defenses. BrioTech is all about providing its customers products that help promote skin wellness. BrioTech Topical Skin Spray is a light misting spray free of added fragrance, oil, alcohol, and parabens. All this protection without clogging your pores. It's a must addition to your all around daily skincare regimen. Try BrioTech, a collection of sprayers from two ounces to eight ounces, With this bundle, you can have BrioTech Topical Skin Spray wherever life takes you. All natural and safe to use from head to toe. Irritations, redness, post-procedure sensitivities? Get BrioTech Topical Skin Spray today. Years in the making, doctor recommended, and available through Amazon. Learn more at BrioTechUSA.com. That's B-R-I-O-T-E-C-H-U-S-A.com. Support your skin at BrioTechUSA.com. Exploring new territory every day. This is Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com with your comments, your criticisms, your questions, and well wishes. Let me know how I am doing. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lisa Solterbeck. She is an intuitive empath and clinical social worker. And she is joining us via Skype in Salem, Oregon. And if you want to find out what your block is in your life, or maybe you have a question about trauma, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So Lisa, today, how do you work with people? Is it with trauma? My, my real specialty is to really dive people into their unconscious blocks. So the things that um, they're unaware that they're doing that's stopping them from finding a fulfilling life. Mm-hmm. So we kind of, we created a holistic healing center called Journeys, a center for your soul. And it's all about really taking people into that work that is maybe, you know, driving their life, how trauma drives our life and takes us to places we don't want to go. We want to teach them to to go to the direction they're attempting to go. Okay. So you basically found that niche, though, through everything that you went through. 
Oh yeah. Like it's, I think if you walk in the doors of our center, it's, we're nothing like other places around. It's uh, hopefully you'll feel my heart. We worked really hard. My partner and I have pulling this, this feeling of what we needed for deep core healing and manifested it into a physical form. And so it's really about a safe space. We have a cat, you know, we, yeah. we, um, we have tools and different opportunities and it's all about equality. Mm-hmm. So anybody that's been left behind from a system or something that they didn't feel loved and supported, they can come here to heal and forgive and let go. Wow. That's wonderful. So can I ask you then, how do you help people to overcome trauma? Well, I, I do two different doors in my center. One, I can do it clinically from a mental health side, and two, I can do it as an intuitive spiritual guide. And so I do similar work. There's just really different structure systems for a clinical piece than there is for the spiritual side. Mm-hmm. On the intuitive work, I will kind of guide somebody from what I see. So they might come in and not say anything to me particularly. I'll, they'll just say, I'm having this issue. And I'll guide them into what I can sense and feel within them that they're maybe avoiding or what they need to deal with and get them to go explore the feelings behind that. Mm -hmm. I also can feel like when somebody's talking, when they skip over something, I can feel that because I feel it in my body. Mm -hmm. And so then I can go, oops, go back. What was that? And then we can get that topic and take them deeper. Okay. So intuitively you're feeling then. Yeah. Going yeah. Through. It's uh, use my sonar <laughs> things that is not in the literal world. Uh huh. But like you said, that's not for everyone. So you also offer the clinical right. aspect of right. it too. Okay. Right. So if somebody wants to come from the analytical perspective or science or research and I can guide them that way too. Um, you know, cause I really believe spirit and psychology go together, Right. you know, they're, they're meant to go together. I think there was a divide in that because that's how we stopped wars a lot of times, mm-hmm. but I really believe it's time for those worlds to come together to really help people heal. And I I think that's part of what keeps us separated from ourselves. Right. We can't find that connection of the spiritual and the psychological. Right. And we we need to heal as a whole. Right. Right. So so you had told me that you compare overcoming trauma to dealing with grief and loss. Yeah. A lot of my history is working with like hospice or teaching people to do deep trauma work or being able to, you know, move through emotions. And One of the big pieces of trauma work is really teaching somebody to grieve, to getting them the courage to go inside rather than to project and take it outside. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really a gift to help somebody feel safe enough, loved enough that they see that they can surrender what they're holding on to, that they're not identified by this bad trauma that happened and that they can really let go. And, you know, is that saying let go, let God, you know, that it's really let go and find a sense of freedom and peace by surrendering the trauma. Now, do they need to identify the trauma first? No, that's usually what kind of screws people up is because if you need to identify it, you're going to have to know it before you feel it. But Mm -hmm. what we want to do is feel it to know it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't want anybody to make up dreams or, you know, or stories. There's a lot of lawsuits out there in that world for that, that you don't want to pull up repressed memories and, you know, tell people what they're feeling or seeing. What you want to do is help guide them to the place that they're avoiding. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it's why I like clinical hypnotherapy or whatever. It's like you're taking them to an optimal state, to a state they want to feel and helping them do that and just holding sacred space for people to let go. And don't you think, too, I mean, because I practice hypnotherapy yeah. with my clients, I think, you know, a lot of times they're afraid of what they might say. Right. But also to know that you're only going to bring up what you're ready to deal with. Right. Absolutely. It's yeah. um, I, I have total faith in that because I, I spirit walked me right into that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I, my environment, I had to do a lot of work about cleaning my environment up and making changes in my life so that I felt safe enough to finally go to that level, mm-hmm. you know we do healing retreats and things like that. And I always find that the environment is key to the ability to go inward. Right. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So, Mm -hmm. and then the fact that the body memories tend to exist first, do you have your clients sit in their physical emotion, physical and emotional responses or? Yeah. I refer them a lot to like Louise Hay's book. You can heal your life or Uh feel it alive, never die, and have them kind of just understand that the feelings in their body are trying to tell them something. So if you think of it like the emotional body's first, then it moves to the physical body, and then it moves to the spiritual body. 
it's you you have to work from the inside out but sometimes when it's in the physical body you have to go back in mm-hmm. so it's redirecting them that way or you know even the spiritual body if somebody's having an esoteric crisis where they're suicidal or they're saying what's the point um, I, I can't see any reason to live anymore. A lot of times that's coming because they're so lost in their pain that they they feel like they can't ever reconnect. Hmm. And so the soul's dying because hmm. it's dying for a connection. So it's turning them back inward to the emotional body and teaching them to grieve is the key because once they can let go that way, then it's where it's supposed to be and then it doesn't cause physical illness. There's a study called the ACE study by Kaiser Permanente that really looked about trauma and how it leads to long-term illnesses in the body. Mm, Okay. So can I ask then when you're teaching them to grieve, after they have grieved that loss, do you have them replace it with something else? Do they fill the void? What do they do from that point? The funny thing is when somebody's really grieved completely, I don't have to really particularly do anything. I just need to love them there because all they have to do is fill back up with love. And then they, it's, once you let something go, something new can come in. Mm -hmm. So the correct thing that they needed can replace itself. So hypothetically, if your parents taught you something incorrectly, like um, they said that, you know, to be rich, you have to people please because you have to con people into loving you, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, they would say that directly. But if they did, then giving them a new re-imprinted way of being helps them move forward. So just giving them a more loving way to go get their needs met. It's usually just a neglected need is what's you know, that behavior pattern that's taking them off course. Right. And so essentially, too, then you're holding that space for them to open up. Yeah. And, and to realize they need something, okay. that they're hurt, that they, they deserve more love. And once they can grab that and they can let go of the pain, why would they not create that? Right, right. That's, that's how they're going to create their heaven on earth, because they'll realize they deserve the life that was taken and they, they want to take it back. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to have to take another quick break, so everyone stick around for more Love from the Hip. Men, care for your skin properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers their Gentleman's Groom Clinical Facial for just $120. Designed for your rugged skin, a deep cleansing clinical facial is like a one, two, three punch to wrinkles, age spots, and problem skin. Tame those brows, ears, and nostrils. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles one clinical facial at a time. Learn more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A SkinAndMind.com Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life. Triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, Log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's battlefield, the number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. Did you know that your skin is your body's first defense against disease and infection? BrioTech knows and has developed their topical skin spray to enhance your skin's natural healing responses and defenses. BrioTech is all about providing its customers products that help promote skin wellness. BrioTech Topical Skin Spray is a light misting spray free of added fragrance, oil, alcohol, and parabens. All this protection without clogging your pores. It's a must addition to your all around daily skincare regimen. Try BrioTech, a collection of sprayers from two ounces to eight ounces. With this bundle, you can have BrioTech Topical Skin Spray wherever life takes you. All natural and safe to use from head to toe. Irritations, redness, post-procedure sensitivities? Get BrioTech Topical Skin Spray today. Years in the making, doctor recommended, and available through Amazon. Learn more at BrioTechUSA.com. 
That's B-R-I-O-T-E-C-H-U-S-A dot com. Support your skin at BrioTechUSA dot com. Want a more youthful figure no matter what age? Find answers at Madsen Medical Spa. Allow doctors Aaron and Paul to help you eliminate your frustration with weight management. Say no, no to yo-yo, diets, and exhausting exercise grinds. Madsen Medical Spa will do the heavy lifting for you and coach you all the way through to your ideal weight. We offer the latest and greatest in body sculpting and body contouring lasers and devices, high quality nutritional supplements and meal replacements, as well as mindful practices. We will treat the inside to treat the outside, and it's all perfect personally tailored for you. Men and women, drop inches, not just pounds, and see a healthy, beautiful you. Consultations are free. Results are priceless. Log on to madsenmedspa.com. That's M-A-D-S-E-N medspa.com. Or call 425-656-8008. That's 425-656-8008. Get the shape you want this summer. Become a healthier, more beautiful you. Talk radio with a purpose. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and to subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lisa Solterbeck. She is an intuitive empath and clinical social worker, and she is joining us via Skype in Salem, Oregon. So, Lisa, if a person suspects they may have been sexually abused when they were little, what are some clues they can look into to find out if they have? You know, from my heart, I always want people to heal, you know, by just paying attention to signs and omens and what their life is trying to reflect to them. So you can look at areas of your life where you may be trying to fix other people. And know that a lot of times that's your way of trying to control the world outside of you so you don't have to feel certain feelings inside of you. So notice if you're unwilling to feel the full range of emotions, if there's certain emotions you won't feel like anger, um, if you won't express your truth, things like that. That's really important to start becoming conscious and aware of that, document it, and then even bring that into a therapist and say, I'd like to explore why I'm doing this. Mm, Okay. Um, Another area is just pay attention to things in life that you're avoiding or, you know, comfort zones you won't leave. A lot of times we stay in comfort zones to self-protect because um, we're trying to not let anybody know that we're hurt and we want to stay safe. But you can stay safe too long and then your your place of refuge becomes your prison. Mm. So willing to cross your comfort zones and then notice the emotions that come up. So that can be where trapped pain is hidden. Mm-hmm. Um, controlling other people control is a sign that you have trapped fear so if you find that everything you need order and structure and everything has to be a certain way start to release that control a little bit and notice what starts to come up Mm -hmm. okay yeah I think one of the coolest little tools you can do is just if you have people that love you in your life that observe you go to them and say what is it that you see in me that I maybe am not paying attention to okay yeah and what that gives you is they're going to see things that your brain is trying to trick you into not seeing. And so if you don't have good friends or family or people that you deeply trust, go to a, a you know, hit a few different people out there, a therapist, um, intuitives or different healers in different modalities and ask them what they're seeing. That's what I love about psychic work is because they see something. And so if you would listen, you might see where there, if there's patterns mm-hmm. or things that you could be able to dive into and really explore. Right. Okay. That's great advice. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah. c- can you briefly tell us about your retreats? Yeah, so we do healing intensive retreats at the Oregon coast. And so we'll rent a house at the coast and we really dive into that. So if there's trauma or something that's heavy for somebody or they want to wake up to find out who they are or their purpose, what we do is we actually work around the person and we let everybody's eyes be able to explore what the person is avoiding in their brain. Mm -hmm. And so they'll present the issue and then we'll dive into what it is that a person can't see. And then we help them get to that pain body and release it. They're incredibly powerful retreats. Um, You have to be really ready to heal because you don't want to be up in resistance all the time. Right. (laughs) Uh, But we also do international retreats where we use the land and exploring. We're going to Greece here in September, but we use the land to show people what's trapped inside them and help you know, experiences and stretching comfort zones to bring up the old pain inside of them as well. Okay. Wow. Those are great retreats. Yeah. So where do you hope to grow from here? 
Well, I'm writing a theory, and in my theory, my book and my tarot deck and my different different charts are all about trying to help people learn that they can heal from the inside out mm. and that they don't need to live in the world of trauma anymore and that they can surrender and set themselves free. So really moving in that direction, we're also working on creating some outdoor space that we can teach people to heal and dive into their emotions and connect to source through the land. Oh, that's wonderful. So. Yeah. How can my listeners learn more about you, your retreats, and your healing center? And what's your healing center called again? It's called Journeys, the Center for Your Soul in Salem, Oregon. Okay. And then my website's lisasolterbeck.com, or they can go on Facebook and look up Lisa Solterbeck LCSW Intuitive Empath. Um, Or they can call the office at 503-991-5091. And I do phone sessions or Skype sessions. There's lots of different ways to meet with me if you're not here in Oregon. Awesome. And lastly, I want to ask you, what is your message for anyone trying to move through a trauma? Believe. Believe that you can heal completely and don't settle for anything less. Know that you're capable and you're smart and you have a great heart and your purity deserves to be set free. And that you're not bad or troubled or off course. Sometimes you've just been hurt and you need someone to honor you. Mm. Find that person and do your healing work. Yeah, that's great. And so can I ask you, too, having been through everything that you went through, would you do it all over again? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> like, I would, I can't even imagine going back. I had a tragedy with my son, and I, I had all these skill sets that I've learned from this, and I couldn't have survived it if I didn't do this work because I knew that I was going to be okay. Mm. So just trusting, you know, that this work will set you up for success in the future. Yeah, definitely, that everything has a reason. Yeah. Amen. Uh, (laughs) Well, thanks again for being here today. I really appreciate your time and I I really appreciate you sharing your story. I think there's a lot of healing in that for others. Well, thank you. And thank you for doing this show. This is a, a, a brilliant show. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Eric, my rad producer. And you, the listener, you can find me at lovefromthehip.com or sakuraskinandmind.com. You can also follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. And if you really love the show and are interested in running an ad for your own business or you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com. And tune in next Wednesday at 2 p.m. for another Love from the Hip and make self-love contagious. Go ahead, I dare you.